you are in a WL Toys 144001, this $9 mod could absolutely change your speedrun life. If you've been struggling to get speed out of this thing, keep watching because this could well be the solution. You don't need brushless power, you just need this little part. WL Toys 144001, more than certainly the fastest RC car you can own for under $100. On 3S, with the stock motor, stock gearing, the thing will do a smidgen over 40 miles an hour. Traxxas, Armour, forget it, they're not even getting close to that speed for that kind of price point. And the obvious thing is to fit a brushless conversion to the car, and they actually now do a specific brushless conversion for the 144001. A stock, it comes with a 540 can brushed motor. 40 miles an hour on 3S though. Now, a good few many people out there, including specifically the RC Master, has gone considerably faster than that. And people have been nudging on 100 miles an hour just on 3S with this. Yours truly has been trying at that, and I've actually ended up running slower. And that's been slowly driving me crazy because I, I cannot get mine to go faster. In fact, some of the time I fit the brushless setup and I'm barely in like 60 miles an hour. I think should be doing 80, 90 miles an hour with that setup. It's like I've been driving with the handbrake on. Hence the title of this video. The best modification you can do for the WL Toys 144-001 costs under $9.00. You want to make yours go faster, straight out of the box, keep on watching. Because this one, sometimes the stuff is so simple, you have to go to the basics to discover what you're doing wrong. Now, I've switched these contact foam tyres, which I believe the RC Ma Master does, as does Tomley RC for certain, on there. What is this mod that is so super special, Rich? Trust me, guys and girls, this stuff is not rocket science on here. I felt like I was driving with the handbrake on on the car because the front wheels I could spin like this and you will see them there, the, the left and the right ones carry on spinning regardless of which we're doing so a lot of freedom in the drivetrain on there but the rear one, I've adjusted it now, was like no, not moving at all I could literally turn one wheel and this one was not moving at all on there the whole thing felt very very stiff literally like I was driving with the handbrake on I took all the wheels off the car in frustration. Front is still the same setup, blisteringly quick on it. Back, suddenly, is blisteringly quick as well. But previously, the front had been spinning fine. The rear had been absolutely binding up like crazy. I put the wheels back on, same problem. I can literally turn one wheel and the other one is not turning at the rear. I power the car up, this one fires up and this one doesn't turn at all or vice versa on there. So I'm thinking there's something majorly wrong with the diff, but I take the wheels off. Both shafts spin up absolutely fine on there. So I'm thinking, hmm, maybe the problem is not the diff, maybe it's the wheels, which I've had concerns about for a slight while on there. So I take the hexes apart, this is where it gets interesting, people. Every hex pin I took out as a considerable bend in it. Now to highlight this, every single one of the pins through the drive shaft here has been bent and folded forwards, literally all of them. I've got a bend in the middle on there. What has happened is the plastic one has basically been forced against this inner hub carrier on here. So it literally, like I say, it's like putting a disc brake on. The tighter I'm tightening the wheel up, the more, the harder this thing is getting squeezed against the inside and simply acting as a brake because this plastic one is getting crushed as it's getting screwed in. Fit the metal ones and they're not going to get crushed. These are plastic hexes. My simple fix, replace them with these $9 aluminum ones. Why is that such an issue, Richie? Think of my fist as being the rear stub axle carrier. My hand as the hex on here. As we're tightening the wheel nut on here, the plastic hex is getting closer and closer to the hex hub. 
so much so that it's forcing itself around it and instead of turning freely like this the thing is basically acting as a disc brake on there so as hard as I'm tightening the wheels up I'm actually increasing the problem on the car hope that makes sense with that whiteboard it's very difficult to get it across so basically with the plastic hex on there as I was tightening the wheel nut up this thing is getting squeezed on harder and harder onto the stub axle carrier, never mind the drive shaft on it, and the friction is just increasing because that thing is getting crushed. With the aluminum ones on here, they're obviously not going to get crushed in a hurry, so it's no longer acting as a disc brake. And the front ones, well, they were always buttery smooth. Look at that. Not even wanting to turn the central drive shaft at all. The differential is absolutely fine. They're buttery smooth and those rear ones, once I've replaced the met the plastic hex with the metal one on here, look at that. Carries on rolling even after I've spun it round with my finger. Literally the other day there was so much friction in there, either one wheel or the other wouldn't turn. It was like somebody was holding it like that because as that plastic hex was getting squeezed in against the hub carrier, it was literally acting as a brake on the thing. Whereas now we're free to go absolutely crazy so time for a quick spin around the yard i think rich and if anyone doesn't quite believe me just check out that as to how smooth they are now spinning both front and rear actually getting ongoing rotation when i take my hand off it which bodes very very well for the yard test you're about to see okay so time for a quick blast on the bench Looking everything's all right Check out how long those wheels carried on spinning for after I turn the throttle on. And so that appears to have solved the stiffness problem at the rear end. Anyway, time to take it out for a quick spin around the yard and then maybe tomorrow, full on speed run. Just remember guys, if you like what you see today, don't forget to subscribe. Now I've turned the steering jewel right up a bit. I set it on the speed run setting. Just getting a feel for it. I have a feeling it's going to wheelie on demand, he says. Okay, full throttle wrench. Yeah, I think we might have had excess of power in here now. So for speed runs, definitely going to need to feed that power in. But the thing is, oh man. I wouldn't say it's just about uncontrollable in there, but we definitely need more space. Foam tyres. Getting a bit used to handling on there, man. But it's good, brakes are good. Woo. And I need to be for going around driving like that. A little bit of cogging around the start there, but once this thing's rolling. Oh. But once this thing's rolling, it absolutely wants to fly along. But I'm feeling, I have a feeling. Ah. One of the reasons why I don't necessarily go out and run this stuff fast straight away, look at that. The motor mount has come loose on there. Simple job to tighten the screw back up underneath there. But had that happened at speed, could have been devastating. For one thing, it would have stripped the gears for sure. So that's why I test the stuff to death before going out there doing a full on speed run. Speaking of which, you want to see that? Then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Well, there we have it, folks. Richie's $9 mod for the WL Toys 144-001. I felt like I've been driving around the past few weeks with a handbrake on this car because of those plastic hexes being crushed up against the stub axles on there, particularly at the rear. And I had to put my thinking cap on to think of what the solution was. As you'll have seen from that earlier clip, I'm going to give the thing full throttle now and then ease off and don't put any brake on. The car just wants to run and run and run. That is purely because I fitted these metal hexes to replace the plastic ones on there. So if you're having issues with your 144001, maybe not going quite as fast as you thought it should do, then maybe it's time to look at getting some of these metal hexes. I do like turning the wheels super tight on my cars because I've had a couple of big time losses where a wheel's flown off the car at speed, which is one thing you definitely don't want to happen. So if the thing's feeling a little bit tight, don't go loosening those wheel nuts too much. Even just driving this thing around the yard, I can safely say these $9 hexes I've solved the problem. Now all I've got to do is find a body that fits and 
play around with that gearing. So if you don't want to miss the upcoming videos of this beast running, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.